Today's scripture reading comes from Genesis chapter 4, verses 4 through 9, and James chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Abel, on his part, also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of their fat portions. And the Lord had regard for Abel and for his offering, but for Cain and for his offering he had no regard. So Cain became very angry, and his countenance fell. Then the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why is your countenance fallen? If you do well, will not your countenance be lifted up? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at the door, and its desire is for you, but you must master it. Cain told Abel his brother, and it came about when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Who among you is wise and understanding? Let him show by his good behavior his deeds in the gentleness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom is not that which comes down from above, but is earthly, natural, demonic. This is the word of God. Um, I'm continuing on the series of uh, counterintuitive pathway to the blessed life. Um, you know, there are a lot of things uh, that scripture talks about, and, and the greatest thing it talks about is abundant life uh, that Jesus promised to his followers. And um, as a pastor, uh, looking forward to his retirement, uh, you know, after 30, 40 years of ministry, um, I, I notice cer certain people and their personality types miss out abundant life regularly. And so um, that's why I began this series. And, and many of this pathway to this um, abundant life is counterintuitive. Or it doesn't sound good, uh, or, or there are opposite things actually sounds much better uh, than what Scripture is talking about. But in the end, um, the result is completely different. Now, I, I'm going to talk about a few things, but I'm going to talk about victim mentality, basically. And uh, if you ask me, as a pastor, after all the years of your ministry, what type of people are most difficult to minister to? And I'll say without hesitation, victim mentality. Uh, and and this, this is so poisonous, it robs the person's uh, spiritual growth, and it retards a person socially, uh, uh, psychologically, uh, and, and relationally in every level. And it becomes very dangerous. And so today, uh, I feel this is an important message because this is not, this is not limited in a personal uh, life. It's not individual life anymore. <clears throat> this has become a pervasive value system uh, in our society. It, it, it flows into every layer of a society in our policy making, in our, in our way that we expect uh, from one another, especially through higher education. And this has become some kind of a, a, a atmosphere, a ambience in which we, we relate to one another. And, and so uh, to me, this is very, very uh, um, uh, important. Because uh, we have to recognize this fact. We are living in the same place, but this place is no longer uh, what it used to be like five years ago. It's a completely different different uh, um, set of values that dictate uh, you know, our, our behaviors and decisions. And so uh, this, I need to talk about it in a greater scale. So I'm, I'm gonna talk about spiritual issue that permeates into our uh, personality and the, and the worldview and values that seeps into higher level in sociology and, and, and um, you know, uh, psychosociology, ba basically, and that's what we are facing today. Whether you recognize it or not, United States is a very similar place uh, as Soviet um, Russia back then, Russia 100 years ago, 1917. There's a Bolshevik revolution that brought in communist, the socialist, communist, Marxist value uh, into the world in a political system, in a, in a nation that, sp uh, that spilled into China. The current day today, now Eastern Bloc's gone. We have a Cuba, Venezuela, North Korea 
And th these are just desperate places upon the earth today, not only financially, but socially and, and every other way. Uh, and, and this is uh, the outcome, outcome of uh, this Marxist value. And this Marxist value, if you go down enough to it, is a victim mentality that dictates this. This is what I'm talking about. So it's an individual spiritual issue that, that orients a person with an attitude and orientation that is a victim mentality. And that, you know, you add those people around and you create a culture and the worldview and values that dictates the policy of nation. And that, after this Bolshevik revolution, literally hundreds of millions of people died and suffer under this system, uh, even today. And so that's, that's how poisonous and dangerous this is. And we need to talk about this because this is, this is uh, the United States in a tipping point uh, and, and uh, you know, a lot of this election year and uh, so many things happening. As a believers, we have to be on the right side, praying for the right things and expecting the right thing. And we need to be the champion of truth of the scripture, because of Marxism, why is it so bad? Because it's a polemic opposite of what the scripture is talking about. There cannot be a Christian Marxist or communist or socialist. And it's as simple as that. And so this is um, uh, my, my go-to person in all this, because it is, it is, it is uh, coming out in the surface of, of, of our uh, society as a wokeism as a DEI, a diversity, equity, and inclusion. And, and all these things are sounding good stuff, but it actually has a bitter fruit because it's based on victim mentality, which is c completely against what Christianity is talking about. Thomas Sowell, <coughs> Thomas Sowell is an economist. <coughs> He's still alive. He's a 90, 91 or, or something. And, uh, he was a, a, a Marxist when he was a, a young man. And, and um, you know, he realized this is completely wrong. And, and uh, later he writes this, Marxism and the idea of equity are found, founded on envy and pure hatred for those who are more successful than they, not from compassion and care for the poor and needy as it presents itself. Uh, and, and that's why it sounds so good, but actually the real heart and focus is completely opposite. And, and that's why, um, you know, scripture talks about uh, here, uh, James 3, 1, 14 and 15. But if you have a, a bitter jealousy, selfish ambition in your heart, do not be arrogant. Do not be self-righteous, that is. Uh, and so lie against the truth, the biblical truth. This is how God made us. The, the real the poison of, of Marxism and uh, socialism is it denies and negates and laughs at the idea of God, idea of sin, and idea of uh, salvation. It thinks that people are in a blank uh, slate. And if you do certain things and people are static like wooden blocks, you put them in there, they're going to stay there, which is just pure nonsense. People are not like that. And so here, um, you know, it, it, James talks about this. That if you suffer from bitter jealousy, the victim mentality is basically that, and, and selfish ambition in, in your heart, do not be arrogant and so lie against the truth. This wisdom, so-called wisdom, is not which does not come from above, but is earthly, natural, and demonic. Well, he, he puts a finger right on the thing. This, the heart of this sounding good stuff is actually a demonic. Why people are, 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 uh, gravitate toward this? Because there's a void in spirituality. They depend everything on human wisdom. And this is this is summation of human wisdom. This is why it's so, so popular in higher education, like Harvard and all that kind of stuff. And it has just pervasive impact in all the things that we are experiencing today. But if you go back a little bit, Franklin Roosevelt, FDR, said this in his, uh, in his uh, campaign message. 
is this, those forces in 1940, and he's talking about communism, Marxism, and Nazism, hate democracy and Christianity as two phases of the same civilization. They oppose democracy because it is Christian, and they oppose Christianity because it preaches democracy. You cannot have two A. There's no Christian socialist or communist or Marxist. Christians are for freedom and democracy. And that's why the reason I'm preaching today is not only in a personal scale, but in social scale, uh, is because of Marxism and socialist philosophy reinforce the idea of a victim mentality, retarding human potential both individually and corporately, not to mention impeding spiritual growth. I feel I have an intimate knowledge of this because from 1990, about 34 years ago, every year, uh, every year, one to two or three times a year, I've been visiting communist countries. I taught there, I spoke with the pastors, I ministered there for 34 years for former communist countries and communist countries present day today, including Vietnam. And I, I was flabbergasted when I first went in there in 1990 and how these people are held back uh, in their, in their um, work ethics, in their self-achievement and development is so retarded back. And they're like, if you look at the surface, they're like innocent, but they have no discernment. They're, they're just so vulnerable for any kind of propaganda and, and all that. They believe in those things that the pure lies of the government. And I was wondering, what's the cause of all this? And, and I was also wondering, why are the communists so fearful of Christianity? They hate Christianity. And what's the relationship between? And I realized the spiritual void, spiritual void makes a person vulnerable to the lies of this world. And that's why once the Christianity really roots down in people's mind and heart, they are no longer um, easy to manipulate or with mass uh, things. So um, today we're going to go look at where did this victim mentality originate? And you'll be surprised it originated way at the creation time. And the first actually net result of falling away from God and Adam and Eve, basically whatever you, you, uh, you know, um, understand, the basic disobedience is they trusted the word of Satan over the word of God. God says, in the day that you eat of that fruit, you will surely die. And then Satan said, you will surely not die, but you will become like God. God is lying to you, and God is uh, afraid that you will be like him. So go ahead and eat. And so basically what the human following is, they, they believe the lie, they believe the earthly and demonic spirit over God's word, right? And as a result, the first effect of that, the falling away from God and kicking, you know, being kicked out of the Garden of Eden was murder. And Cain rose up against his brother Abel, who offered the sacrifice according to God's guidance. But Cain did not bother to do that. He was a gatherer, and so he gathered, you know, a scavenger, collect the food, and, and just did that. It was rejected. So here, but for Cain, for his offering, he had no regard. God had no regard because it was outside the guidance of worship. And this is very important, brothers and sisters. There is a guideline to worship, right? In the scripture, people offer strange fire and they're just consumed by fire by God. They're killed on the spot. The two sons of Aaron, next in line to be high priest, they're killed right there. There is a guideline to worship. And right? in modern day, in the contemporary church, whatever, we just whip it up. It's, no, it's not. There's a guideline to it. Now here, so um, he, he offered whatever else. 
and God had no regard for it. In other words, God rejected it. And so Cain became very angry and his countenance fell. I want you to pay attention to this. Cain, his offering was rejected. Right course of action is to correct the offer, sacrifice. But his countenance fell. He felt bad. All right? Feeling is important. So right now, what's happening is the moderns, <clears throat> which I belong to, modernist thinking is fact and history that dictates our feeling and emotion. So there is a fact before the feeling. Postmodern, postmodern, feeling is important. And because of that, facts and history can be changed, like cancel culture. And there are a whole lot of versions of truth in the online. You pick and choose whatever you want that fits your feeling. That's a danger. And so here, and, and, and the Lord, verse 6, I want you to pay attention to this. Because God comes to trying to help him out on this. And the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? Brothers and sisters, if you have a temper problem, first thing when you get angry, when, when you're, you know, you know, you're, blood vessel shows up and the face get red and all that before you blame other people ask yourself why am i angry if you ask that really sincerely and honestly you'll be, you'll find out oftentimes the point of anger is not someone else it's actually you and so now so god asked this question why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen Right? Why are you reacting this way? Right? Have you thought about this? And then, and then God, God actually helps him out and say, if you do well, in other words, if you correct what sacrifice that was wrong, then will you not contents be lifted? If you do well, if you correct what was wrong, will, will, will you not feel better? Right? And don't be led by the feeling here. You have to change what was wrong, and then feeling will follow. Not the feeling, in order to change the feeling, change the facts around. That's not what it is. Change what went wrong, so that your feeling will follow. That's what he's saying. But he says this warning. But if you do not do well, in other words, if you don't really deal with a real problem that was a wrong offering, spiritual spiritual interaction with God, if you don't fix that, the sin is crouching at the door. That word, is sin is about to pounce on you and its desire is for you. It, it, it's going to devour you. It is set out to devour you. That's what it means, actually. But you must master it. If you don't master, if you don't master your emotion, the victim mentality in this case. If you don't do that, it's going to devour you and destroy you. It is an incredible, actually, uh, uh, teaching and guidance on this. And, 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 um, and then Cain said to the Lord, you know, so, and then you know, kills his brother, and then um, uh, God kicks him out from even that community. And he says, God said, uh, Cain said to the Lord, my punishment is too great to bear. He's complaining. He killed his brother. As a punishment, he should be killed. But, you know, uh, he kicks him out and put a boundary around him. And he says, behold, you have driven me to this day from the face of the ground. And from your face, I'll, I'll be hidden. You are not going to answer me anymore. I, I, I'm, you know, whatever. And I'll be a vagrant and a wanderer on the earth. And whoever finds me will kill me. Right? So Cain doesn't seem to understand the gravity of his action. But he's blaming this is unfair. It's unfair. And, and, and this is the stuff. This, this is the victim mentality. The people who suffer from victim mentality usually find the cause of the problem in other people and the environment that is system, but not within themselves. This is a problem. All right. 
So now we are, we are uh, raising up a generation that's more narcissistic, self-absorbed, or self-centered than any time before. And we have uh, you know, the politicians and all that, and those people who are making policies a popularist, which means sounding good, but actually um, result, you know, impact study and all that, prove over and over again the result is bad, but they're selling it because that's, you know, they need to be elected and they, they're not going to pay the price within their elected uh, uh, period because it's going to destroy, uh, undermine the, uh, you know, society for long term. And so, so many of that is happening right now. And so, the victim mentality is joined at the hip with a narcissistic orientation, self-centeredness, self-absorbed uh, mentality. So they are blaming everything. It's my husband's fault. It's my wife's fault. You know, when, when I, uh, I don't do marriage fi- uh, counseling anymore, uh, praise the Lord. Uh, and, and, if it, and especially when I retire, I forget you. you know, I, uh, but the thing is this, sometimes... A couple comes in, and one is so self-righteous. I've nothing wrong. I've done nothing wrong. It's all her fault. If you fix her up for me, we'll be just fine. That kind of attitude. Or vice versa. You know, that you cannot even begin a counseling. It takes two to tango. And if you don't take any blame, any responsibility... But you find everything wrong with, with your partner, your, your spouse, then you cannot even begin a conversation, right? There's no therapy that, that can help you. That's the orientation. That's why I'm saying the people with this victim mentality is most difficult people to uh, minister to. Because no matter what kind of truth you speak to, it just goes out and then they use that thing, that truth, to judge other people. They never become introspective. They, they never take it in. That's why, uh, you know, uh, these type of people are very, very, this is why these type of people constantly miss out every opportunity to be blessed. That's why I'm preaching this. You know, I'm, not, I'm not here to just say this and I'm condemning people. No, that's not what this is about. These are the people who misses out all the time. And, and, you know, like for me, I have only a few months to go before I retire, and I don't want these people to miss out the rest of their lives, you know, doing uh, you know, the thing. Now, uh, while I was preparing this message, I heard this, uh, you know, when I walk, I listen to podcasts and things like that, and, and, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, Jordan Peterson, uh, he was talking with uh, Ian McGill Christ, and he is a neurologist, a psychiatrist, and a researcher on <laughs> Uh, brain hemisphere, you know, conversation with one another and all that kind of stuff. And as you know, uh, Jordan Peterson is, a, you know, a psychologist. And they're having talking about this personality thing, which caught my interest because they're talking exactly what we are doing in a, in a healing, in a flip side way. And, and so I'm going to just talk about that. And, and, and uh, you know, this is not uh, verbatim. I, I just heard, right? So I, I'm just doing that. There are four stages for immature worldview. Now, the one is experience with the material world, the real physical world, right? And then our behavior response, our, you know, just a reaction to it, rather than response, it's reaction, right? And then after that, it's a imagination of the world, uh, algorithm forms in your brain, your understanding of perception of the world, that is, and then that your language and the communication uh, changes and all that. Now, when you do inner healing, something happens to that person, you know, some traumatic events and whatever, locking events we talk about. And then your defense mechanism forms, and the, the series of defense mechanisms becomes your personality. Other people just see you're very insecure uh, um, or, or you're very judgmental and critical. These are defense mechanisms that have become series in your in your life, it become a, so when other people look at you as a person, that's what they see. A- and then what happens is, because your language, uh, you, your interaction with the people are very uh, uh, defense mechanism oriented, other people start to notice that and they stay away from you or they, you know, whatever. And that reaction reacts, you, you pick that up and you react to it, 
to it. And so it goes back and forth like that. It re reinforces your worldview and understanding of it. Let me explain this. Well, <clears throat> so you're, you're walking, taking a walk, and, and you, you fell. And you got up and say, oh my gosh, you know, this dangerous place, right? Uh, and, and next time you walk, uh, you, you better shoes, your hiking boots on, and uh, you know, you, you have a padded pants or whatever else, right? And this is, this is dangerous, right? That is your, your reaction. Uh, and, and uh, you know, and then what you, what you are, uh, the, the data that you are accumulating in your brain is like, every, this, is, this is not a friendly world. This is a hostile world. If you don't watch what you say and do, it can hurt you. So you are forming an algorithm in your brain. This is, imaginary world is forming in your brain. Or that's a worldview we are talking about. And that's going to seep out in your language and the way you communicate and do all that, your personality changes as a result of it, right? Let me put it this way. The neurologists are saying this. What you're seeing right now is not reality. What, you, what, what that is, a signal that comes into your lens and retina uh, it is an optical signal. That has to be changed to electrical signal to have your brain neurons to accept and reconstruct the world according to its brain, right? So you are, what you're seeing is the reconstruction of reality from your brain based on electrical uh, signal, not optical. It's not like window here, it, you're, you're getting it. But you, your brain has to reconstruct it. Are you with me? All right, is this interesting? Or what, what is that guy talking about? All right. and so, so what's happening in your, in your perception of the world, worldview, is a reconstruct of reality in your brain, not necessarily the reality. That's what I'm trying to say. That's why some people see it half cup full, half cup empty, in the same situation, right? And so your interpretation of the world, that's, that's what I'm talking about. And if you interpret the world that this is unfair world, I'm, I'm unfairly being punished. I'm victimized by these powerful people, system. And no matter what I do, it doesn't make any difference because these people are, people are oppressor and they're oppressing. I am oppressed. I'm always a victim. That mentality is dangerous. That's what I'm saying. And that's, that's not what the scripture is talking about. Now, so, uh, <clears throat> so everything starts with experience in the real world. All right? You know, uh, Janine shared today, she's going away to uh, uh, Taipei. Right? So, if you have children and graduate from college, if you're a college graduate, or even, you know, you know the young adult, uh, you know, uh, in between college, uh, career and all that, I recommend highly to go one year internship. This is a real world experience in cross-cultural setting away from Southern California value system. You cannot buy this with money, right? This is a real data you're collecting. You're the, and then you, you react to it and, and from it pr pray that healthy worldview and understanding of God's activity in your brain. That's going to help you to react in proper way as you walk with God the rest of your life. Right? That's what we are, this, this is what we, we are we're calling it defining moment for these young men and young women. That's what we are talking about. Right? This is not something that you can get it from books. This is something. So why is this so important? You know, the uh, police uh, rookie trainer complained recently and uh, I happened to listen to that, uh, uh, some kind of report. That is, this MZ generation, uh, the millennial and Zen Z generation, were so insulated by helicopter parents, they have never experienced physical confrontation. And these guys are coming into police uh, to <laughs> get on a, a rookie training, and you put them out in the street, they misinterpret 
the minor conflict as a life-threatening threatening situation, they pull out their guns. So if you had, if, if they've been bullied as they grow up you know, in high school or whatever else, they have some kind of experience of physical confrontation, then they can, hey, talk, or, hey, chill it, man. We just walk away from it or whatever else. They don't have that skill. Oh, oh my gosh, this is going to kill me. They pull out a gun or a taser or whatever else. Their reaction is drastic because they don't have experience. Only thing is they saw so many people get murdered on TV and Netflix. And they, they, they go by that. Their value, their, their world in their brain is constructed by somebody else's experience or narratives, stories. So this is the thing. United States began with Bill Clinton, especially. He's a master at this. He was a great storyteller. And he had this crackle voice. So he make it really sound sad. All right? And, and so when he tells this wonderful story or sad story, he can sell this horrible policy without going through the vetting process. So is this is going to have a right impact or wrong impact. People buy the story. That's why we don't talk about facts anymore. We talk about narratives. We tell them stories. That's the problem. And this generation are fed up. In, uh, you know, they grew up being fed in the stories and feeling. And facts are something that you can choose and reject later on. That is a problem. So we are to point to this. The lack of real physical experience substituted with a screen in our face is so dangerous in human development, especially in the area of perception of reality, I told you, uh, about police uh, and the relationship building, constructing a healthy worldview, which in our case is a biblical worldview according to the Bible. So this is the problem. And so many of us have this wrong lens and picture and because of that, we are missing out what God is doing. Because it's not even the radar. We are so fleshly oriented. And, and we cannot decipher what the, what the Lord is doing in the, in the spiritual realm. That is a problem. We do it again and again. Now, I told you about this police you know, uh, rookie story. But you know, the people who are lacking emotional uh, you know, letdown and then, you know, regaining hope and making up, uh, you know, uh, relationship uh, and, and all those kind of things. They're lacking in this real life uh, disappointment and hoping again, you know, getting hurt, forgiving again. They're lacking all this. Only thing they're re uh, seeing is from TikTok and Instagram of somebody else's ideas and experiences and all that. And they construct this unreal world in it, and when the biblical truth is being spoken, they reject it because it doesn't fit into their own, own world they have created within their brain. This is so dangerous. And so this is the, this is the type of things that we are dealing with, and it's going to get worse and worse. Now, we, we are past AI. Did you know that? We pass artificial intelligence. We are AGI. We are artificial generative intelligence. This is scary stuff we have right now. With the robotics and, and nanotechnology, five years from now, 10 years from now, is an entirely different world and the system and all that. If we do not, as Christians, if we do not awake and, and, and better ourselves in understanding, and the whole world uh, is, is changing so rapidly and quickly. This is why I was so against uh, the COVID uh, and the uh, pandemic. Uh, the, the children uh, unable to go to school. This is so detrimental. You know, in, in their ages, especially three to five, their acquisition of language is through facial expression. And you put their mask on and on, on screen and you're trying to teach kindergarten kids on this. Even though there's a record, record, historical facts and record in Germany, for an entire year, healthy children, none of them died. That's, that's a record. Even, you know, even in 
not non-pandemic years, people, kids die. Their accidents and other things happen. And in the United States, especially, and all that, there's another story. But, but the thing is, we have pulled back a generation of education for two, three years. And you, you talk about lack of skilled labor, uh, who cannot have this uh, reasoning and logic and all that. Wait until 10 years later when these guys catch up. A totally different story. And, and why is that? It's a human wisdom. Because that's presented as love. We care for you, so you stay. And we know what we are doing, kind of thing. And, and, and the, you know, when you're looking at this all the time, when you have a faulty understanding of all that, guess what happens? When you are a, a victim mentality oriented person with a, a faulty uh, lens view, uh, view, then every, the world becomes a binary system, oppressor and oppressed. That's all, right? This is a Marxist paradigm, haves, have-nots, oppressor and oppressed. Then with these two categories, you look at your husband and he becomes oppressor and automatically you become oppressed. Your boss becomes oppressor and you become oppressed. Your teacher is oppressor and you are oppressed. And then you push that boundary further up and up and up the chain, then God becomes oppressor, and you are the oppressed. You know how demonic this is? This is completely against what the scripture is talking about. And that's where people feel they have an angst and anger toward the church, toward God. And they wouldn't say it's God, it's church. Because pastor is oppressor. I like to oppress you. <laughs> you know, I mean, that, that, that's what it becomes. So it becomes binary because you, you, you are a victim. Once you have a victim mentality and everything becomes that. And so rich people are oppressor. They somehow probably get, uh, gather their wealth by cheating and oppressing people. And therefore, you don't have as much as they do. And because of that, that you can take as much away from them. That kind of mentality. Dangerous. And, and, and this is what Cain did. He felt unreasonably rejected by God. And to make it worse, his brother did better than him. So you get rid of him. That's the mentality. And the problem with, with the victim mentality is they never take responsibility. But they always blame, blame people. But if you get a little bit more sophisticated, if you blame some individual, there are other people come in defense of that person. And therefore, you always blame a system much bigger than abstract evil, right? And, and, and so, it did not occur to uh, uh, Cain to improve his sacrifice, so, but he was so quick to blame unfair system, right? And, and he felt he was set against, discriminated against by God and his brother. And so as I, as I mentioned before, the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? It's not like, why are you angry? That's, uh, you know, God didn't say that, that way. He said, why? Why are you angry? Have you thought about this? Right? Uh, and why, uh, why has your countenance fallen? But look at this. If you do well, you'll feel better. Don't be led by the feeling. But think. But if you do not do well, it's a danger, it's a warning. Your sin is about to swallow you up right now. You are being set up, and you cannot handle this. You have to master it. You, even though it's unpleasant, even though it may not sound right to you right now because your world is warped, but the truth is truth. 
And so, in Cain's case, you know, his, uh, his uh, real life experience, his offering is rejected. And his response, he killed his brother. Rather than correcting the offering, he was led by anger and dejection. Now, he built this worldview as uh, everybody's against me and God is not fair, and all that kind of stuff, and it comes out in the what? Language and communication. So Lord said to Cain, Where's your, where is Abel your brother? He said, I don't know. Am I my brother's keeper? You know, and, and this kind of rebellious uh, and the bellicose attitude happens. The thing is, even worse than this is this, Cain-like personality, if they ever display compassion, it is only for those who have the same worldview or in the same exact situation as themselves. This is what we call tribalism uh, and postmodernism. And, you know, so if you have your community of people believing the same thing, even though it could be wrong, and nobody uh, accepts it, everybody rejects it, but in your Facebook club or, or whatever, uh, that this, this works. Right? And as long as there's a group of people who, who agrees with you in that group, whether it be flat earth society or whatever else, it's okay. And that kind of mentality. And, and these people, they show compassion to those who are as the same selfish, narcissistic as they are. And, and with that, they feel superior, self-righteous, because they have shown compassion to their kind. And this is why Jesus says, if you're nice to your own family, what good is that? Even the robbers do that. Even the thieves do that. What credit is there for you in heaven? Jesus says. Right? So the problem is, this, this victim mentality is so poisonous and is a borderline paranoia, psychological issues. And it's easily tipped into full-blown paranoia that leads mass psychosis. This is what we are experiencing in our society. And this is what happened in the Cultural Revolution in China, 1960s and 70s, when the people rose up and all the landowners, they beat them to death and, 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 and all that. And that has happened, the Bolshevik Revolution uh, under Vladimir Lenin. Lenin and after that, Stalin killed the whole that, and, and literally saying hundreds of millions of people died because of this, this attitude, this thing. There's a mass psychosis. The people go crazy altogether because there's a tipping point on this. When, you're, when you feel that you're like a victim and the people are telling you are a victim, and you're a victim, you're a victim. We are not a victim. We are victors in Christ Jesus. And that's the scripture is talking about. We are living in an imperfect world. It's, it's not because of oppressor per se. Sin, individual sin, my sin and your sin are cause of it. And when you put that together, the whole thing is a sinful and all that. That's given. That's where we are living. That's why we have to live like light and salt of the society. Why? Because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's what needs to happen. But we are blaming game. Everybody's blaming. She did this. She did this. And all that. And ultimately, God, why are you allowing all this? Why do I have to do this on my own? Isn't that, isn't that what Elijah said? You know, everybody's after me. And I, only I. And what did God say? I said, right? And he said, don't take yourself so seriously. There are 7,000 other people, you know. And, and, and so here, the, the thing is this. The victim mentality robs people's drive because they feel like the playing field is tilted. We are always fighting. We are playing against the sun all the time. It's unfair, right? And if it's unfair, why even try? Uh, these people robbed and, and uh, they, they made all the money and success and no matter how much I try, it's not going to make any difference. Then why try? Why not the state pay for you? Work ethics suffer. And when the, when the workforce of the, uh, uh, the nation, if they take back and they don't want to work anymore, 
then the whole thing goes under. That's the problem we are experiencing already. I, I've seen a uh, you know, few cases in my ministry. There are some, some people, uh, some husbands don't work. They get laid off once and then uh, try a few times and after that, don't. For two decades, they don't work. And the hus- wife is the one who works and pay for it. And, and they have a, well, of course, they have a marriage problem, financial problem. They have all kinds of problems. And they come. And I say, how come you're not working? Oh, well, you know, cannot find the work. I said, well, go to McDonald's. They pay you 20 bucks an hour, man. <laughs> I said, that's below me, you know. And, and after 20 years of unemployment, who's going to hire you? You know, that's evil. In the scripture, it says this. Those who do not take care for his own, that's his own family, is worse than non-believers. Paul said this. I didn't say it. <laughs> you know, the love, righteous, self-esteem, healthy ego, all these things in the scripture, but this is not, this doesn't sound as good as equity. Bible never speaks about equity. Bible always talks about equality. Same starting point. Not same end point. If you don't manage your time, if you don't manage your finance, if you don't work hard, where do I get that? Here. Number one, take responsibility. If you, are, if you find yourself in a self, uh, you know, a victim mentality or your you know, loved ones, including your children and whatever else, number one remedy is take responsibility. Because when, when you're busy blaming other people, you don't take responsibility. So this is what Paul says in Ephesians. He who steals must steal no longer. Okay, cut that out. But rather, he must labor, work, performing with his own hands what is good. All right, here's the here's thing. You cannot do any kind of work just to make money. No, you cannot sell drugs to make money, right? Do what is good with your own labor, right? Labor. That doesn't end there. So that he will have something to share with the one who has need. This is the thing. This is Christianity. Don't stay in the negative. Don't stay in the neutral. Go to positive. You, you think people are, uh, are treated unequally, unjustly? That's true. We are living in this sinful world. Well, welcome to the reality, right? Don't complain about it. Work and solve the problem. Help those who are in real need, not laziness and all that, right? So take responsibility, and that's number one. And because you'll see, you'll see a lot of young people, they'll, they'll be busy posting things on, on, on the Instagram and all that and complaining about all that. They wouldn't lift a finger to help out. Right. And then, second thing, this is very, very important spiritually, be thankful. People with victim mentality are never thankful. They're always complaining. You know, in my family, we always give Thanksgiving offering every month. We make up the reason to thank, give Thanksgiving. That's a part of it. Not only tithing and offering, we have Thanksgiving, no matter what the amount is. Right? We make Thanksgiving category. That's part of it. And that is part of your life. But you know why? Because scripture says this, in everything give thanks. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. You want to know God's will for you? Give thanks. That's what it is. Because people who are always complaining, they lack thanksgiving. And if you lack thanksgiving, you cannot grow spiritually because without thanksgiving, you cannot enter into prayer, enter into his gates with thanksgiving, enter into his prayer, court with praise. That's how you enter into his presence. Without thanksgiving, you cannot do that. And number three is this, regardless of situation, in everything, right? And then this is own the present. This is a work ethics we are talking about. 
And, and you talk about equity, there's no such thing as equity here. Second Thessalonians chapter 3.10, he says this, For even when we are with you, we used to give you this order. This is not teaching, it's a command. All right? Paul used to give a command. If anyone is not willing to work, then he's not to eat either. Does, does this sound like love for you? Compassion? This is word of God. This is how you have healthy ego. Because you work with your hands. Whether you, you provide well or poorly, you have put your labor there. And, and you are eating your own bread. And the second thing is this. Now such person we command and exhort in, in the Lord Jesus Christ to work qui in quiet fashion and eat their own bread. The state should not pay for you. You should gainfully employ yourself and make bread and feed yourself and, and, and put it with efficiency and help those who are in needy situation, real needy. But if you're not willing to work, you should not eat either. That's, that's, this is what Paul used to teach. Not teach, command, right? That's Christian thing. Why? Because when you, when you labor and get, so there's a philosopher said, if you don't eat bread with your tears, you don't know anything about life. You cannot even mention about life. There's a labor. There's a tear. Then you gain, and then, that way you own your, your, your present. And God will bless you through that. And, and the, uh, the final thing is this. Leave the judging to God. God is the only judge. None of us. None of us have 100% information in any given situation or any given person to actually make a judgment call. Right? Nobody does. Only God does. And the scripture, Psalm 96, 13 says this, Before the Lord, for His coming, for He is coming to judge the earth, He will judge the world in righteousness and the people in His faithfulness. Only God can judge faithfully and righteously. No one, no one else. And this is why it's so important for us to reject the victim mentality, any form or shape, individually to the corporately. And, and in this fast-changing time that we have right now, and this, this worldview has shifted just radically in the last five years. I mean, it's been happening under the surface. It broke the surface. It's just flooding the whole, whole you know, the the media and whatever else. And the Christians cannot stay calm and still on this. We need to speak out, not in an arrogant way, or not like know it all, but in humility and love, we should speak the truth nevertheless. That's how you become prophetic church. That's how you become champion of truth. That's how you become light and salt in this society. And so, brothers and sisters, Let's take responsibility. You know, when, when, when people of God came and repented, like Nehemiah time, and Josiah, uh, any kind of uh, uh, the, uh, revival time, they repented for their own sin and sins of their fathers. They took responsibility even of their parents and their forefathers. Not only their own sin, and they, this is a, called identification confession. As a people who are living in Southern California, and people, uh, uh, you know, all that we repent as a part. Of, we, are, we are in a fraternity of the people, humankind. And because of that, we, we repent for other people's sin as well because we have not impacted them enough. The church was not powerful enough to influence. And individually as well. And because of that, it's not only my sin, it's not somebody else's sin. And that sin we must repent as well in order for, to, for us to be heard by God. And so, uh, and take responsibility, and, and even that, even in that dire circumstances, there's always the element of redemption. God always deposits something to redeem. And because of that, give, thank, give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, and own the present, 
and be industrious, get involved, uh, and, and especially if you see wrong, get involved, and, and to the right, right, to the right, and, and leave the judging to God. You know, when we are doing a uh, food, food pantry uh, in our campus, and, um, you know, it, when we began, right, and, and some of our guys got uh, really discouraged because, you know, this, we started in Kobe season and, and the cars driving in, some cars are really fancy cars. I said, these guys have better cars than me, man. And why are we giving them food and all that kind of stuff? So I, I told them to basically shut up and, and you know, just... <laughs> You know what we found out? Uh, and these guys, some of them, of course, made a bad financial decision. They're stuck with it. They cannot sell it and whatever else and, and that. But there are a number of them are actually neighbors who are helping these families who are in need. They don't have cars. So they come and pick up five family uh, supply, and then they are in the car. We check them. And, and, and then, because they don't have transportation, they couldn't come in and get it, and, and they get it, and all that kind of stuff. So, so, you know, when I told them, hey, don't judge, you know, uh, sometimes they're in need because they made a poor financial decision. What are you going to do? Help them out right now. But we found out a lot more of them were helping out people who don't have transportation. Right? So we don't have all the information. We make judgment on people, and we've got to stop that. So do what is right and stop judging. Leave the judging to the Lord. And so therefore, uh, once again, I want to say this. Victim mentality is a poison that's going to destroy you, your loved ones, and even this nation. And we need to pray against it, rise against it. Amen. Why don't, you, uh, why don't we bow our heads right now? And all this victim mentality and all that we talked about, but if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, all this thing is good for nothing. And, and uh, I speak against this uh, uh, socialism and all that, uh, Marxism, because it's based on the idea that there is no God, there's no such thing as sin, and there is no need for the uh, Savior. But Christianity is right up against that. There is God and the sin that separates us from his love and his provision. And Jesus has come to die for us so that we may have this life, uh, have it abundantly. And because of that, we rejoice in the Lord and our life, whatever situation that we are in, we are thankful. And so if you have never invited Jesus to be your Savior and Lord, uh, this time it is good for you and uh, best time for you to just invite him in your life it's very simple in your simple prayer and uh, Lord Jesus come into my life be my savior forgive me of my sin self-righteousness but fill me with your Holy Spirit that I may know you that I may be healed and restored to live this life abundantly according to your plan and God will answer that prayer. And next time there's a baptism, get baptized. There's a further, first obedience in the word. That you'll be a, a child of God. And those of us who pray that prayer and know the truth, we pray this bitter root of victim mentality is part of your life. Reject it, purge it out in the name of Jesus that God will fill you with thanksgiving. God will fill you with um, excitement about life and service and sacrifice as our Lord has demonstrated through His life.